So this is a big section. It's got a bunch of word problems, and then after all the word problems, it's got a bunch of formulas, like lots of letters where you got to deal with roots and two powers. This is where we really start edging into more advanced algebra. And this is what makes the fourth exam cause people to drop two grades. It's this stuff. You can get it down, though, but it's going to take more of your time than the other material did. There's just more here. All right, the width of a rectangle is one foot less than the length. The area is two square feet. Find the length and width. Okay, well, let's start with our basic formula. What, what formula are we talking about? We're talking about area, area of a rectangle, aren't we? So area of a rectangle. What's the area of a rectangle formula? Area equals length times width. We good with that? Remember that one? Okay. Did they tell me the area? Yeah. Area is two. Don't worry about square feet. That's just the units. Area is two. Okay, what am I going to do with the length and the width? Yeah, see, they're saying one less. What do we always do any word problem where they say blah, 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 one less? X minus one. How huh? that always means X minus one. And who else is in the problem? Plain X. Remember, whenever there's an X minus one or a whatever, there's also a plain X, huh? So just make these two length and width, X and X minus one. doesn't matter which one's which. We'll straighten that out later. That'll be easy to figure out later. Just X and X minus one. See how I'm coming up with that? Somebody's always plain X, and then the other one's X minus one because they said one less. Not good? So now we just solve that equation for X. Can you do that? So let me let you do that. So start by distributing. Go boom, boom. X squared minus X equals 2. The sea monster's on the scene. I don't know why I call it a sea monster, but whatever. There it is. There's the X squared. So you know what to do, right? So get a zero, huh? Whenever you see x squared, you know the game plan. Get a zero. So jump this two over here. Good. Uh, bring it up here. Is that is that factorable? Yeah. I think it is. I thought they were going to give me one that wasn't factorable. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's coming, huh? Okay, yeah, what multiplies to be two? 2 times 1. And how does it add to be negative 1? Negative, negative 2. Yeah, negative on the bigger. Uh, negative 2 plus 1. Good. Good to there so far. Right, sign in the middle, sign on the bigger. So, okay, what are the answers then? Positive 2, negative 1. You know, it's just opposite side, opposite sign. We just set them equal to 0 and all that, right? Well... No, no need to check as far as there wasn't a root in the beginning. But let's check with reality. Remember, is math real? No. No. Remember, we, even the imaginary numbers, no, right? Math, but we use it to do real things. So math itself isn't real. So we have to watch out. Math isn't real and it'll do crazy things. Think about these answers for a minute. What are these? This is like rectangle length width. What if I said, hey, I measured this table. It came out negative three. <laughs> right? Can't happen. Bye bye. Your math is wrong. Right? That's that. The math is good, but the reality that's not in our. We don't live in a universe where you can have negative lengths. Maybe if there was some extra dimensional universe we lived in, that could be the case. Math doesn't know about reality. Math is just running numbers and saying these numbers work. I don't know what these numbers mean, but these numbers work. That's all math does is run numbers. We know you can't have that kind of a length in the real world. So 2 is our only answer so far. But now that's x. This is x equals 2. What's, we need length and width. Well, how do we do that? Well, you come back to the words. Always go back to the words in the end. They'll tell you. They will not keep a secret from you. What does it say? Width of the rectangle is 1 less. Width of the rectangle is 1 less. So what do you think the width of the rectangle is? Yeah, it's 2 minus 1, it's 1, right? Because we got the answer 2, 
But the width is one less. Say the words. The width is one less. So the width must be one. Well, then what's the two then? If the width is one, who's the two? The length. The length. The length must be the two. And we're done. Does that make sense? The length is two. The width is... Do everybody see what I did at the end? I threw away the negative answer. That's impossible. I took the two and I went back to the words. And it told me width is one less. So I said, okay, take, take my answer two and take one less. And that's width, says the words. So if width is one, well, then the length must be the two. See how it was easy to straighten out which was which at the end? Just go by the words. The width is one less. So this must be the length. Good? Are we happy? I'm looking for happiness. I'm not sure I'm seeing happiness. Kara's really happy, clearly, but I'm not sure if anybody else is as happy as Kara. Since when is anyone happy? All right. So length is twice. But so same thing. I'll let you, I mean, same but different. Same general thing. So start off with the same formula. We're talking about area of a rectangle, right? So you know the formula. Area is length times width. See what you can do. Use X. Again, I, would use, I wouldn't use L and W. I think it's easier to use X and then whatever else they say. Don't worry about the units. You don't have to do anything with square yards. That's just the units. So I'm, one of these guys is going to be X, always. doesn't matter which one. I'll straighten them out, which is which in the end. I'll put it wherever I just put it first. And then what's the other one? What, what, what words are they saying to help me know the other? They're not saying one less. Twice. They're saying twice. What's twice? 2X. Isn't that 2X? Isn't twice times 2? Mm -hmm. Right? So if they said one less, I'd be X minus 1. They said 5 more, I'm X plus 5. They say twice, I'm 2X. Right? And the other one is always plain X. Good to there. Makes sense. Okay, and now what's X times 2X? 2X squared. 2X squared. Yeah. Now let's, let's solve this in the easiest way. Remember how to solve when you have X squared and no X to the first power? Yeah. Remember what you do? Yeah. Get just You don't have to do the whole C monster zero thing. Just get x squared alone and do the root. Remember that? That's easier. So when, uh, so when you have x squared, Carrie, you always shake me off like, we have never done that, Mr. Aaron. <laughs> it was about three weeks ago, or maybe two. We talked about that. When you have x squared and no x to the first power, you uh, get that thing alone and root it. So that's easier. You don't have to mess with the whole zero. Right, you know what I mean? Like if we had a plus 3x or something here, then yeah, I'd have to get the zero, try to factor. If it won't factor, do the negative b, plus or minus. But if you just have x squared, it's simpler. Just divide by the, just get the x squared alone, so divide by the 2. That'd be 400. And then what do we do from there? Root it, root it. Hit the buttons on your calculator. 20. X is 20. And, they, and, what, and now, okay, but how, how do we know, how do you always finish these problems? The yeah, go back to the words, huh? Go back to the words. Length is twice width. So saying, hey, you want to know length? Here's length. It's twice. So twice 20, huh? 40. Length must be 40. If the length is 40, what's the 20? Must be the width. And there we go. Is that good? 20 is the width, the length is 40. Is all well there?
Other questions on this one? Okay. So let's try that one. Oh, we need we need area of a triangle formula. That that one we did also, but it's been a while. Anybody remember happen to remember the area of a triangle? One half base times height. Because a triangle is like half of a rectangle, isn't it? And you mean if the other half was there, it would be a rectangle? Right? See how a triangle is half of a rectangle? So it's half of base times height. So that's, so you got, you got to know for this next test, or put on your 3x5 card, the area of a rectangle is length times width, area of a triangle is half base times height. All right, so see what you can do. They're giving you the area, 68. And you know what to do the base and height, let the first one be x. Always. Okay, so the area is 68, and the base and height, well, you let the first one be x. We just always, doesn't matter what, just always let the first one be x. But what's the other one going to be? Some kind of x, some kind of x formula. See how there's always a plain x and then an x formula. If they say 1 less, it's x minus 1. If they say 7 more, it's x plus 7. If they say twice, it's 2x. What are they saying here? 9 shorter. That's like 9 less, huh? So x minus 9, huh? Getting the hang of that? See how it's always one plain x and one x formula on that? Question? Is that good? You put the x minus 9 first? You totally could. Yeah, the order doesn't really matter. Yeah. Is that good to there? Now, let me jump in and help right here. You really want to get that half out of there because, you know, fractions are such a pain. What, what, what will get that half out of there? By two, huh? Yeah, both sides by two. Is that good? So right away, before you do anything else, I would just multiply by two and boom, that one's gone. 120, 136. That good to there? So you see how the two canceled out with the half on the right side, but it multiplied on the left? Because there was nothing to cancel it. So now just go ahead and distribute, and you know, the rest. You got x squared, you got the sea monster. I think it might factor. It does. Yeah, use your calculator and try to find out factors. If you can't find it, you can do the negative b plus or minus thing. What you slept in? Did that make up for it? No. 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 You made me all anxious. <laughs> we get to there. As soon as we see the sea monster, the x squared, we think get a zero. Get a zero. So uh, grab that one thirty six and jump it over here. So we get zero. Bring it up here. So 0 equals x squared minus 9x minus 136. And then uh, you can, fa how do you factor that? Because it's kind of hard. I take the 136 on my calculator and just try dividing by different numbers. So, um, I don't know, something like 6 maybe. It doesn't divide. Doesn't work, huh? Divide by seven. Does that work? No. Eight. Does that work? Eight and seventeen. There it is. Eight and seventeen. Side in the middle. Side on the bigger. So minus seventeen plus eight is minus nine. Yeah. So if you try different numbers on your calculator, when you get to eight, 
you'll find 8 and 17, which are the pair that can make 9 in the middle. So that way you don't have to do the whole negative b. I mean, you could do the negative b plus or minus thing. Now, what are my two answers then? Remember, it's opposite, opposite, negative 8 and positive 17. But, of course, you throw away the negative 8 because triangles can't have negative bases and heights and things. So 17 is one of our answers. Am I going too fast? Is that okay? Do you guys all see the factoring? Just take the 136 and divide by different things on your calculator. Okay, now, um, remember how, we al how do we always finish up a word problem? Always go back to those words, huh? They'll tell you what's what. All I have right now is I know one of the answers is 17. I don't know the other answer, and I don't know which one 17 is, base or height. What will tell me all that information is back in the words. The base is 9 shorter. The base is 9 shorter. So I take that 17 and I go, 9 shorter, what's that, 8? That's the base. And that means the 17 must be the height. Because 17 is one of the answers, but the base is 9 shorter. How are we doing? Can you do these? Is it warm in here? Yeah, I... You know, I, know that. I tried it. I've been wearing long sleeve shirts. It was too hot. I thought, oh, I'll... I'll just wear shorts, so I'll be better, but it's even hotter today. All right, anyway, I'm just complaining. All right, so um, all good? So three of them, four out of 24. Yeah, they're going to, they're going to, the last half is not word problems, but they're not easy either. They're a different kind of thing that's hard. So hypotenuse, all right, so they're talking about hypotenuse. What, what formula do you always use when they talk about hypotenuse? A squared, we know we're going to use A squared plus B squared is c squared for sure let me let me go ahead and draw a right triangle and it says the hypotenuse is 25 long so great i'll just write that down that the hypotenuse is the side across from the right angle right mm -hmm. see how the see how the other two see how this side and this side both touch the right angle they're not the hypotenuse, whereas this side here, he's across from the hypotenuse, isn't he? I mean, sorry, so across, the hypotenuse is across from the right angle, is what I mean to say. So, all right, so the hypotenuse is 25. One leg is five shorter. What do you do with five shorter? X minus five, huh? Now, where do you put it? Doesn't matter. You can put it on the bottom, or you can put it on the other side. It doesn't matter. They're just saying one leg. We have no, no way of knowing which one. But everybody good with 5 shorter? That's always x minus 5. And what's the other one? X, because there's always, there's always a plain x, huh? So there we go. Is that good? So now, what formula are we going to use? A squared plus b squared is c squared. Pythagorean, we always use that for any... For, right, for any right triangle, for any right triangle, we always use a squared plus b squared is c squared. Do you see the difference between this problem and the last triangle problem? Here, let me go back. See, this was triangle also, but they never said right triangle, did they? They never mentioned hypotenuse or right triangle. And they spoke of the area. So I knew I wanted to use the area formula for the triangle. Whereas this one, it's a right triangle and they don't mention area. So for sure... Pythagorean. Okay, now when you do the a squared, b squared, c squared, the a and the b, the order doesn't matter, but you got to get the c right. Which one is the c? It's the hypotenuse. It's 25, huh? Yeah, good. As long as you get that, the rest will go. So x squared plus x minus 5 squared. That good? All right. So then this is x squared. This is x squared minus 25. 25 squared, use your calculator. Isn't that 625? Get to there. Are A and B like interchangeable? Yeah, A and B are interchangeable. Yeah, order on A and B doesn't matter. Yeah, you can have the X minus 5 first. We all good to there so far? Is that good? To there? Questions to there? Is that good to there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody's answering. Can you 
<laughs> That's no stinking good at all. You guys just gonna let me do whatever I want up here? I feel like I could just do anything up here. Put your feet up. No, I mean I'm doing false stuff, and you guys are okay with it. I don't want you to be okay with it. What am I doing that's false? I didn't foil. When the two's on a parenthesis, you have to write two of the parentheses. You can't just square one, square one. But that's so common that I do everything I can do to help you not do it. But you still seem okay with it. I want to make you not okay with it. That's not true. But I know it's done a ton, so I'm trying to help. You can't do that. You have to write two of the parentheses, right? You can't just say, oh, just square him, square him. That's not true. But very commonly thought to be true. So instead, you've got to write two parentheses and FOIL, right? Whenever there's a two on a parenthesis, we have to write two parentheses. All right, so then we get x squared minus 5x minus 5. I see it comes out a little different, right? See how it's not just x squared and 25? So that's correct. Now. now I'm doing true math. So you know what to do. X squared's root, it's ugly head. So what needs to happen? Got to get a zero, right? Gather like terms and get a zero over there. What's x squared plus x squared? 2x squared. Minus 5x minus 5x is minus 10x. And then how do you get a zero? Subtract 625 from both sides. Good so far. This is a long problem. Mm -hmm. These are long problems. We're only on number four. So keep going. Um, I'd probably, well, no, you can, mm, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, okay, so I get 2x squared, what do we got? Minus 10x. Is that what it is? You could factor out a 2. I would, I would probably do that. That's number 4. Yeah, factor out a 2. Everybody good to there? Everybody got that copy down? Factor out a 2. Now, you can... Um, is that factorable? Probably. Maybe. I don't know. So I would try because that would save time. I would take that 300 on the side of my paper with my calculator and start dividing by things. Like divide by 10, you get 30. Divide by 20, oh, there it is. You see what I did? So it is factorable. That will save some time. Don't mess around with the negative B. Plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a stuff. So it factors. We good? 20 and 15. Sign in the middle. On the bigger. Okay, now what do we do from here? The, you know, the, ans the answers are just positive 20 or negative 15. What about that 2 in the front? Who cares? It doesn't have an X. <laughs> it's only things with an X that matter, right? And we can't have a negative answer for real-life shapes, so throw that away. So the only answer is 20. Well, the first answer is 20. One of the answers is 20. How do I always get the other answer? Go back to the words. Okay, well, let me bring a bit more. Hypotenuse. One leg is five shorter. One leg is five shorter. So what's the other leg if it's five shorter? Fifteen. So the legs are 20 and 15, aren't they? And we're done. It's a coincidence that the negative answer we threw away turned out to be the other positive answer. That actually happens a fair bit, but not always, as we've seen.
minus Yeah, we just totally ignore it because it doesn't have an X. Only things with an X can can have variables and vary and make anything zero. Is that good? Are we happy with that? All right, these are long, difficult word problems. All right, we're talking about a picture frame. Here, my artistic skills leave a little bit to be desired. All right, so. So there's a picture with frame. All right, and um, it says the outside is 14 by 19. Good so far? Math should come in handy. And then it says 104 square inches of the picture shows. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. So first off, can we figure out? Oh, and they're and they're saying find the thickness of the frame. So let's let's call that x. So x is how thick the frame is here. It's the same thickness there. It's the same thickness here, and it's the same thickness there. X is how thick it is all the way around, right? That's what we're trying to figure out, what that thickness is. Now, think with me for a minute on this. If 19 is, well, let's do the 14. If 14, if, if side to side is, if, if from here to here, outer edge to outer edge is 14, then... How much is inner edge to inner edge? Seven. <laughs> yeah, think real life. What if, what, if, what if I said, hey, guys, I've got this long board. It's, uh, it's 14 feet long, and I'm going to cut off uh, two inches here, or let's say three. I'm going to cut off three inches here, and I'm going to cut off three inches there from each side. How much is left? you would say, well, 14 minus 3 minus 3, right? Because I cut off 3 and I cut off 3. Well, that's what I'm doing here, right? If it's 14 outer edge to outer edge and you cut off X, cut off X, it's 14 minus 2X, isn't it? Does that make sense? Do you see that? Outer edge to outer edge is 14. Cut off X, cut off X. It's 14 minus, it's 14 minus the two edges, minus the two X. That's the inner to inner width, isn't it? Does everybody see that? And now, what's the inner to inner height? Well, what's outer to outer height? 19. 19. Outer to outer, top to bottom is 19. It's 19 top to bottom, outer, and then... Cut off X, cut off X. So the inner to inner height is 19 minus 2X, isn't it? So whenever you cut off two edges, you subtract 2X, don't you? Does that make sense? All right. So now, so what? Well, that'll, that's what I need because see that 104 they're giving me up there? That's, that's what? That's 104 of the picture shows. Now, where's the picture show? Does the picture show in the frame? There's, there's a person in the picture frame. No, no, the picture doesn't show in the frame. The picture shows in the picture zone. So they're saying that zone, the picture zone, the area, it's a rectangle, so the area of a rectangle is length times width, right? We're talking about it's a rectangle, right? Every rectangle is length times width. They're saying the area of the picture zone is 104, so what's the length, what's the width and the length of just the picture zone? Well, that's the inner. 
length and width, right? That's the picture zone, 14 minus 2x and 19 minus 2x. So that's what we need to put there. It's 14 minus 2x and 19 minus 2x. That's the length and the width inside the picture, isn't it? Everybody see that? So the 104 is inside the picture. That's the area inside. And that's length and width inside multiplied. So there's our little equation, which is going to be a little painful equation. So let's go to a new screen. That's okay. So 104 is 14 minus 2x times 19 minus 2x, right? You all got that down? So now you got to foil that out and all the stuff we always do. So boom and a boom. What's 14 times 19? 266. Thank you. Minus 28x, boom, boom. Minus 38x plus 4x squared. My time, my time, it was like 50, 66x. Plus 4, 66. Like that. We get to there, we see the sea monster, x squared, rears its ugly head. Get a zero. Get a zero. And that's 162. I'm going to put it in the right order. 4x squared minus 66 plus 162. Yeah, I, yeah. I would just stick it in the quad. It, it technically is factorable, but it's not easy. I think it's easier just to put it in the quad. Just because just that would be just nice? Ours has no, got no guarantee of that, I think. No. Negative B plus minus squared to B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So I'm just going to go straight to the quad, grab the A, grab the B, grab the C. So what do we got? Um, negative B, negative, negative 66, plus or minus the square root of B squared, minus 4 times A, times C, all over 2A, times 4. That's a mess, huh? Bring it up here. This problems. These are just long problems, and they're beyond my ability to calculate, at least without a calculator. Is that what that is? Oh, you mean that final, final whole thing? Yeah. So what's just the sixty-six squared? I just want to do it okay. part by part. Four, three, five, six. Minus, and what's 4 times 4 times? 2592. 2592. And then 1756, is that what you said, Abraham? 64. What is it? 64. 1764. Oh, 1764. Is that, that's probably rootable, right? I'm hoping. Tell me it's rootable. Yeah, 42. Nice. Yeah. We're almost there. The end is in sight. What's that? Yeah, right, because the root is vanished. you got to write two of them. Um, so we get 66 plus 42 over 8 and 66 minus 42 over 8. Said a hundred and eight over eight. Mm -hmm. 
This, yeah, I'm totally running out of room here. This one, come up here, is 108 over 8. The other one is something 24 over 8, which is 3. What's the other one? 13.5? Is that what the decimal tells you? Let's just make it that for now. I, turns out that whole answer doesn't matter. I'll tell you why in a minute. Okay, we good? We got those two answers? Which one do you think's right? And why? Remember, keep one foot in reality. Have we lost the forest for the trees? Have we done so much math we even forgot what we were solving? What is that? Like my old physics teacher, if you gave him an answer, you said 13.5, he'd go... What is that, Heron? 13.5 what? Dogs in the kennel? That was always his line. Dogs in the kennel? Is that what that is? What is that 13.5? So what are those? What were we even doing? Have we lost? Have we forgotten what we were even doing? Frame. Remember? X was the frame width. But those are X, and they're the frame width. Frame width. Frame width. Each side. 13.5. 13.5? 13.5? It's only 14 total. You think 13.5 here and 13.5 there? No. I don't think so. Three. Three. Math has stepped beyond reality, right? We live in some weird <laughs> dimensional world where you can have the widths of the frames bigger than the whole picture. Then, yeah, but no. So math is just saying, hey, those numbers work. That's all math is doing is running numbers. But we know that doesn't work in our universe. The answer is only three. So it's not just negative answers that you throw out. It's other unreal answers that you throw out. Math just runs numbers. Math is not real by itself. If there's any other lesson you got this semester, it's math is not real. Right? What did you learn in intermediate algebra? Math is not real. Right? Give me your statement for the end of the semester. So the answer is three. Right. Open a math program. It's not my contract. All right. Student opens a math book. To two facing pages. If you take a book and you open it up to two facing pages, what does that mean about the page numbers? X plus, X plus one. Yeah, one's one half. Like page 77 and page 78 or something, right? One is one. That's, that's a fancy way for them to say one is one more than the other. They're just being tricky there and a tricky way of saying one is one more than the other. So it's X and it's X plus one. There's some, it's always X, and the other one's X plus one, huh? One more. Facing pages. The product, what does product mean? Multiply. Multiply. So if you times these guys, whoops, I'm not doing that very neatly. If you times the X and the X plus one, the product is 2162. The multiplication is 2162. There it is. Can you solve that? Give that a try. Distribute. Get x squared. Get a zero. You can use your calculator. But if you can't do it on your calculator, you're going to have to use the negative v. Yeah, you, gotta, you can try to factor it, in other words, when you calculate. What's it, 2126? 2162. Am I... Numbers moving around on you? No. I thought I was dyslexic for a second. It's 2162. Right. Can you do something about the heat in here? It is warm, huh? Yeah. I can't, no. It's, um, in fact, almost nobody can because they have these old, what they tell us is we have these old boilerplate things and they like pre-program them and they take like a week. So basically they've shifted them into, into fall winter mode now. And so like if there's a sudden heat surge, like kind of this week is a little bit, then they're, we're kind of stuck in this old building because they, they take like a day to heat up or cool down or whatever. So this is what happens when this weather suddenly shifts. Are they supposed to make the new Yeah, don't hold your breath. I mean, that's, that's in the bond, but they're talking about, they don't even know where to put it yet. Isn't that what we voted for? You're right. It's, it's being emailed. Around. I've seen emails from the dean that it's being thought about. It's in the thinking about stage still. That's, that's decades off. All right, so x squared plus x is 2162. So get a zero, right? Bring the 2162 over. 
x squared plus x, 2162 is 0. And then you can try to factor it. I mean, it will factor. But you have to be tricky with your calculator. Divide by, I don't know, 23. I'm just guessing. And if that doesn't work, 24. 20, I don't know. I'm going to do the quad. Yeah. All right. So A is 1. B is B is 1. C is the minus 2162 thing. All right? So negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So that'll equal negative, well here let me bring it up here, so negative B, negative 1 plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C, negative 2162 all over 2A. We get to there? Plug it into the quad formula. 1 plus, what's 4 times 2162? 8, 5, 8, 6, 4, 8. 8, 6, 4, 8, thank you. Eight, over 2. And then that'll be 8, 6, 4, 9. And I'm, it's got to be rootable. Mm -hmm. Tell me it is. Root of 8, 6, 49? No. Oh. It's got to be. Was I wrong? Plus one. Plus one. Ninety-three. Thank you. Over two. We good? Minus one plus or minus ninety-three over two. And so then that's minus one plus ninety-three over two. Minus one minus ninety-three over two. That's going to be ninety-two over two. It's going to be forty-five, forty-six. That's the answer. The other one's negative. It's wrong. So it's page 46, and the other one's page 47. We got it. We good? See so what I did there, right? The plus or minus. I did the plus 93 and the minus. This one will come out a negative answer, you can tell. So math is putting negative numbers in page numbers in books. There's no such thing as negative page numbers in books. So we cross that off. The answer is 46. So the first page is 46. The other page is 47. It's kind of almost like every negative number is wrong. Well, often, huh? Almost. Almost is true. We good there? Questions on that? All right. There be a small mistake somewhere else. I can check your work. No, it, I haven't done anything. That's just the question. The width of a rectangle is 20 feet less than the length. The area is 10 feet. Find the length and the width. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you're confusing length and, and, and dimensions. So, so, in other words, a rectangle can be, let's say, um, 20 feet less. Oh, wait. So, say it again. The, the width of a rectangle is 20 feet less than the length. The area is 10 feet. 10 square feet, right? What number is that? Uh, number eight. I don't, I don't see how that's... Possible. Yeah, let, let me come by and check in a little bit. Um, I have done a thing to it. That's just... Yeah, I got you. All right, so during the first part of the trip, canoeist travels 28 miles at a certain speed. Dirt. Yep, it's the dirt equation, isn't it? The dirt equation. Distance equals rate times time. All right, you know how to do these. You guys are pros at these, right? No. All right, give it a try. Let me let you set that up. Can you read the facts? The canoeist travels nine miles on the second part of the trip. So there's like a first part and a second part. So in the first part, he travels 28 miles. That's his distance on the first part. Good so far? He travels nine miles, bless you, nine miles on the second part. That's distance on the second part, huh? At a speed, at a speed, 
five, it says slow, slower. It's off the screen there a little bit. Tried to blow it up a little bit. Five slower. A speed, what is speed? Distance rate or time? Rate. rate. Speed, so the nine miles part is at a speed five slower. Isn't that like saying five less? So what's that going to be? X minus five, huh? And, w and whenever there's an X minus five, there's also a? X. X. Good? Yeah, how do we get... Now, now remember, don't... You might be looking at that three hours, but don't. First off, let's do the boxes. Remember when you got four boxes, the other two, you don't need more words or numbers. You just need to do the thing you do with the boxes to get the other two. How do we get the right two boxes? Distance divided by the Divide, remember? Yeah. Distance, because D equals RT. If you want T, I'm trying to find the T boxes. You divide by R, don't you? T is D over R isn't it? So that means this T box is the D box over the R box. So that means it's 28 over X, and this one is 9 over X minus 5. It's the D over the R. It's the D over the R, isn't it? Is that good? Remember how to use those boxes? You get the right two by dividing by D over R. Good. Now, now we'll pop out those two boxes. Bring them out over here. 28 over X and 9 over X minus 5. And then it says total time for the trip is 3 hours. Now we'll use that 3. Total time for the trip is 3 hours. So 28 over X plus 9 over X. Add them up, their totals 3. See that equation? Add them up, their totals three. Isn't that good? Can I go dot, dot, dot? Because we did one of those already today, this very day, right? Well, well, how about the first step? What would be your first step to solve that thing? Common denominator, top, 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 right? So you would go, right? This was, this was your call earlier, right, Ashne? It's 3x... X minus 5. 3X, X minus 5. 3, oh, what am I doing? 3's not in the denominator. Somebody stop me when I do something crazy like that. It's just X and X minus 5. 3's not under a bar. It's just X and X minus 5. It's a little easier then, huh? Right? It's just X and X minus 5. The 3 is not under a bar. So it's just X and X minus 5. So X cancels X, and we get, what, 28 x minus 5, x minus 5 is cancel, 9x, and this is 3x, x minus 5. Maybe I'll just do it quick. I'm already, oh no, I'm halfway done. 28x minus 140 plus 9x, distribute here. 3x squared minus 15x, good to there. Like that. Gather like terms, 28x and 9x is 37x. Like that. We good to there. You okay? So what do we do at this point when we got x squared? Everybody okay with my steps there? Is that making sense? When he's, there's a sea monster, there's x squared, make the other side zero, right? So get rid of everything from the other side. So subtract 37x, add 140. Gonzo, gonzo. So I am running out of room. I'm going to put a zero. Oops, where's I got my box? All right, where was I? So everybody got that copy down okay? So we get 0 equals 3x to the 7. What is it? Minus 37x plus 140 or something? Yes, it is. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot the minus 15. Yeah, here. I better finish it here. It's 0 equals 3x squared minus, yeah, is that what it is? Uh, 4, 7, 52. Yeah, 52x plus 140. So minus 52. Minus 52 plus 140. 
All right, and then that is quad time. I'm, I'm going to go dot, dot, dot at this point. Now you do the quad, right? A, B, C, negative B, plus or minus, square root of B squared, minus 4AC, all over 2A. These problems are long because you do all the stuff we always do, which is long, and then you finish with a quad, often. Huh. So there we go. So there's the rest of that very challenging question, number 10. Good? That okay? All right. Okay, another car one. 450 to certain speed. How we doing? You with me? This is where I start start losing people, not only an hour and a half into the lecture, but also when this material starts getting harder. This is where the grades start to slip. Hang with me. Distance equals rate times time. All right, so the car travels 450 miles. What's that, distance, rate, or time? It's distance, huh? If the speed had been five faster... X plus 5. So there, see what, so this, there's not like two different cars here, are there? There's regular and faster. They're basically, they took a trip and then they're thinking, hey, if we'd gone faster, right? If the speed had been 5 faster, that's X plus 5 for the rate and the other one's X, huh? 5 faster, 5 more. And what's the distance? If you go faster, does the distance change? The time changes, but not the distance, huh? The distance is still 450. So, remember, don't, don't do the one right now. You've got four boxes. How do you get the last two boxes? We divide. Distance over rate. Remember, T is distance over rate. So, 450 over X, 450 over X plus 5. Now, take those two out. 450 over x, 450 over x plus 5. Now do the 1. The trip would have been made in one hour total time. No, they're not saying total time. That's what they said in the last problem. They said total time, so I added the 2. But this time they're saying one hour less time. Less time is talking about how different they are. Their difference. Their subtraction is one. Does everybody see that? If I say this is one less than that, if I say my brother's age is one less than me, doesn't that mean my age minus his is one? If my brother's age is one less, right? I'm one more. Mine minus his is one, right? Okay. Makes sense? Sure. If I'm 50, my brother's age is one less, then he's 49, 50 minus 49 is 1, right? 1 less means if you subtract them, it's 1, doesn't it? Make sense? So, yeah? What's confusing me is wouldn't you want to put the, the faster one first in that case? Though? Um, what does faster mean about time? Well, if you're faster, is that more time or less time? Less time, oh, okay. So Got it? So faster is lower time, so that's why it goes here. Because okay. these are time quantities. I see. Makes sense? Plus, you can tell this denominator is bigger, so this fraction is smaller. So it's right. All right. I'm just, I'm, okay. Yeah, no, good thought. It's just faster time means, I mean, faster speed means lower time. Okay. Yeah. So that's right. I'm going to go dot, dot, dot. I don't got time for that. Right? So then you go on and solve that. Multiply by x, x plus 5, top, 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 blah, 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 blah. Probably do the negative b at the end and spend your life on this problem. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I I did it too. This is where my life went in my junior college years. Really? It really did. Okay. Good. Yeah, so it's dirt again. Distance equals rate times time. Let's set it up. Yeah, so the trick with the when there's a current, when there's wind blowing for an airplane or water moving for a boat in the river. You have to put boat plus the current 
and boat minus the current. And the plus is the width or the downstream when you're with the current. And the other one is against the current going upstream against the current. That's how you have to begin those. Boat plus current, boat minus current. And so I'm just going to set this one up and move on. So they say the, the current is moving at 9 miles an hour. So that means cross out the C, now we know it's 9. So it's B plus 9, B minus 9, the current's 9. The boat goes 38 miles upstream and 38 miles down, so both the distances are 38. I've got the left four boxes. How do I get the right two boxes? Divide D over R. So 38 over B plus 9, 38 over B minus, it's supposed to be B, B, let's scribble in now, 38 over B minus 9, take out those two boxes, and do what? Do what with those two boxes? Total time is 19 hours. Does it say that? Oh, there it is. Total time, total, is that adding or subtracting? Adding. Adding. To be 19 hours. Dot, dot, dot. I got time for that. You got time for that. You got nothing but time, right? To solve sure. that. So you got to multiply by B plus 9, B minus 9. Top, top, top. Cancel. Yeah. On down the C monster, the zero, the quadratic formula. You know the whole thing, right? Does everybody have a cold? No. Oh, no. No, I All right. 13S squared. Solve for S. All right, so now we're going to solve formulas, meaning lots of letters. So how do we solve that little formula for S? First, divide by 13. Yeah, you good? We're going to try to get the S alone. So first step is to divide by 13. So A over 13 is S squared. We good so far? Now, how can I turn S squared into, like, regular S? Root. root it. Root it. Now, remember I said before when you put a roof on the house, you got to go up and down, you got to put plus or minus? Well, that's true in general. But in this section, in this, this section, don't worry about it because these are real-life quantities that can't be negative. Remember how we got to keep one foot in reality? These are formulas representing real life, life things like speed, and that can't be negative. I don't even know area, things like that. So they're going to assume that the letters in this section cannot be negative. So that's nice. It makes it quicker. You don't have to mess around with plus or minus. This section, no plus or minus when you do root because real life letters not negative. Now, there are, of course, some things where, like, temperatures in Minnesota and my bank account at different times <laughs> has gone negative. negative. I know. There are real life. I'm not saying there's never negatives in real life, but we're going to skip it in this section. So, boom. S, so that's gone, and um, that's just our answer right there. See, it's B. Oh, the other thing, you know how uh, we normally don't leave roots in the bottom, right? Isn't that a root, like, in the bottom? Yes. We're okay with that in this section, too. <laughs> We're just being totally casual in this section. Also, leave root in denominator is okay. So, so unless so, so basically you say, well, how do I not do the test? Well, it'll if it specifically says, you know, well, if you look at the options and you see one of them where they got rid of the root in the bottom, well, then yeah, you need to do that. Otherwise, there's our answer. So grab it. It's right. Good. So a couple things will make it easier. Okay, so F equals E, M1, M2 over R squared. These are like big old physics formulas. Solve for R. So. Oh. You know what that's a formula for? That's a gravity formula. Anyway, you don't care. This isn't physics. All right, so um, how do we solve it? Um, I'm just going to put um, under 1, I mean over 1, and diagonal, diagonal. That's what we do. we got one fraction on each side, right? Just diagonal, diagonal. Good. Just put that F over 1, diagonal, diagonal. So we get F R squared is E M1 M2. 
that good? So the EM is what to reconcile? It's a gravity constant. Uh, mass 1 and mass 2 are the mass of two objects, oh. and R is the radial distance between the centers of the objects. Okay, so solve for R. How do we solve that for R? Yeah, divide by, because F is saying, I mean, R is saying, you always got to remember what you solve for. R is saying it won't be alone, so divide by the F. Boom, like that. M1, M2 over F, like that. Last step to finish solving for R there. Root it, root it, done. So it's A, isn't it? Oh, no, that is a negative. I didn't notice. No, no, no negatives. It's a C. C. There we go. Good? Not too bad? Just cross multiply and then get the R squared alone and root it. Uh, nope. No, I'm just saying in the up. Oh. So we have A squared plus M squared is D squared. We want to solve for A. So how do we solve that for A? Can you do that? Go ahead. Let me let you. Yeah, get the A squared alone. Bump that M squared to the other side. And then root it, right? What is, what is it? Oh, solve for A. Okay. Solve for A. Can you read my writing? Yeah. It's very neat. I'm just kidding. All right. So jump, jump that M over. A squared is D squared minus M squared. We good to there so far? And last step to get A alone. Root it, root it, boom. So this is A equals. Now, here's the question. Can I root that D squared? You're all, I assume you're all good to there, right? Just get the A squared alone. Just jump the M squared. The other side becomes a minus M squared. Root both sides. Now, square root of D squared is D. Square root of M squared is M. Yeah, no. You no, you cannot. Why? 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 That looks MD right. Plus MD minus MD. The same problem always. Costco and their glue problems, right? <laughs> cannot because plus minus glue. The Costco glue. See, if that was times, if that was D times, D squared times M squared, totally. I would root the D squared be D and root the M squared be M. That'd be right on the money. But pluses and minuses <laughs> stick stuff together and you can't do it. So that's just it. All those rules at Costco. Actually, Costco is very nice. I went in the other, it was like a couple months ago, and my wife and I were in the parking lot. I don't know what we were doing, but we had to run. We were waiting for one of our kids with some sports event. We ran to Costco, and, and, then, and she had to do something. And I'm like, oh, I'll just run in and uh, get the whatever. You just hang out here and do, do your whatever. I'm like, oh, I forgot my wallet. I forgot my wallet at home. And she's like, well, you can just take my card. I thought, are they going to let me do that? Costco with my wife's card? And I thought, she's like, oh, yeah, they'll let you. Won't be a problem. So I went in there, bought the whatever, got in the line, standing there, come up, hand the guy my wife's card, you know, and he looks at it. He looks at me. She doesn't look like me, obviously. And, um, and he's like, um, is she here? And I'm like, well, she's in the parking lot. He's like, I'm sorry, sir, I can't do that. I'm like, I totally understand. I'll, I'll call her, you know, so I go to call it. Anyway, then, my, then a buddy I knew works there at Costco. So he ran over, he's a manager, and he ran over and goes, oh, no, I know him, I know him, let him through. So, see, they were so nice to me. They just let me use my wife's card, and it was all okay. Yeah. Right, had my wife's picture on it. All right, so, solve for little in. Okay, this is the hard one. How many more? Okay, this one's, honestly, I'm not going to put 19 on the test. But 20, I may. So, let's do 20. T equals 3 pi. 3 pi square. Yeah, this is hard, but still fair game. It could be on the test. It's hard, but not unreasonably hard. All right, let's try it. So we got to solve for G. That's a physics formula for, the, for how fast something um, swings back and forth, the period of the pendulum, they call it. Anyway, so let's solve it. So first thing I would do is I'd get rid of that root. You know, whenever you've got roots in a problem, you want them out of there, right? You just want them out of there. Let's get the root alone first. But what will get the root alone? Divide by the 3 pi. pi. Oh, pi is just a special number. You know it's 3.14. Just leave it as pi, though. Just leave it as pi. 
So just pretend it's a, it's just a Greek P. In the Greek alphabet, it's the letter P. It's just another letter for all we care. It's just a Greek letter. It's all Greek to me. It's all Greek to you. It is Greek. All right. So now we have a square root of L over G. Now, how do we get rid of the root? Two power, both sides. You with me? This is what we always do with roots, don't we? We get them alone, and then we two power. So the root cancels the square. Good so far? So this is L over G is what? T squared over 9 pi squared. Is that too fast? Is that okay? See, on the right side, nothing got squared because the root was like an umbrella protecting from the 2 power. But on the left side, I squared the T squared, the 3 squared, the pi. Didn't I? They all got squared. Okay. Good to there? That was all just to get that root out of there. Now let's go back to business. Two fractions, what do we always do? Diagonal, diagonal, right? Zip, zip. Let's bring it up here. T squared G is 9 pi squared L. Good to there. I just did diagonal, diagonal. So that whole first bunch of work was just to get rid of the root. Second phase, diagonal, diagonal. And that, now, at this point, you can stop and go, what am I even trying to solve for? G. G. You always got to remember. So how do you get G alone? Divide by T to the second. There we go. Divide by T to the second. Boom. G's alone. So 9 pi squared L over T squared. There it is, B. Just like a multiple choice test. There it is. Is that good? So that's reasonable, right? Not easy, but reasonable, I think. Time is all helps. Two minutes for this? Yeah, that's all you got. All right, this one's hard, and it's not on the test, so you probably don't care a lot. Um, n equals n squared. Unless you have pure desire to know math, just for the sake of knowing, outside of grades. No? Not much of that? All right. So, um, capital. So, what do you got to do first off? Diagonal, diagonal, right? Cross multiply. Put this over one, zip and a zip. 12n is n squared minus. And the capital N, treat that as a totally different letter than the little n. Just different. Okay, we get to here. The hard, what are we trying to solve for? Little n. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we do when, this is the C monster, right? N squared, what do we do? Get a zero. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I want to get a zero. I want to get a zero. So jump this over here. N squared. Whoops. N squared minus 15n minus 12. Big N, like that. Right, so we do when we get C monster. Get a zero, right? And then factor, but you can't factor that. So when you can't factor, what do you do? The quad. Yeah, we got to do the quad, and we got to do the quad with letters in it. Negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I got to take that quad now, and I got to stick it in letters. Now, here's the real trick. A and b are obvious, but what c is is not so obvious. What's a? One. One. It's the number in front, right? What's B? Negative 15. Negative 15. What's C? It's the whole thing, including the big N. Why? Because that's what C always is. It's always the whole thing at the end. What like terms? These are different N's. He's a capital N. He's lowercase. Yeah, treat them as totally different letters. Yeah, so otherwise, yeah, otherwise you'd be right, Abraham. Yeah, so then you got to plug that in. Negative B, so it'll be negative, negative 15, plus or minus. Let me change color here. Square root of B squared, negative 15 squared, minus 4, times A, which is 1, times C, which is that weird minus 12 capital N, all over 2A. And then you got to square that, and you'll have your answer. All right. Woo, that was a lot of math. We made it through to the end. So, um, the clickers are open. Click 